right. Good morning, everyone. My name is Linda Hughes. I'm the chair of the Alberta Health Services Board, and I want to welcome you to our first public meeting in 2017. We have several items on the agenda today, which we'll discuss shortly. But first, I'd like to acknowledge some welcome news regarding board membership. We mentioned last year that there was a desire to broaden the spectrum of voices on the board. So the board was very pleased when the health ministry announced last month the appointment of Heather Hirsch to the AHS board. Heather is from the Pecani Nation in southern Alberta and has spent nearly 20 years on the front lines of care. Her appointment follows a lengthy recruitment process that involves significant outreach to our Aboriginal communities. Heather has consulted on many health programs aimed at supporting Indigenous populations, as well as on curriculum regarding the development and delivery of the Indigenous nursing program at Bow Valley College in Calgary. She holds an advanced studies uh, in critical care nursing from Mount Royal College in Calgary and obtained her registered nurses diploma from Grant McEwen College in Edmonton. Heather is a ter terrific addition to our board. We've seen that already after just one day at, at our board meeting and we look forward to the wide ranging personal and professional experiences she's going to bring to our discussions. So welcome Heather. On today's agenda we have two recommendations coming to the board for approval. First, the Quality and Safety Committee has recommendations related to the revisions and updates to the AHS Quality Assurance Committee structure. And the Finance Committee is seeking approval related to a new grant agreement between Alberta Health and AHS for the training and compensation of postgraduate medical education students who work at AHS facilities. So thank you for joining us all today. And now moving to business, I'd like to ask board members if there are any changes or suggestions to the agenda. If not, could I have a motion to approve? Hugh, Marlis, all in favor? Great, thank you. Uh, any conflicts of interest anyone would like to declare? All right, seeing none. Approval of minutes. You've all had a chance to look at the minutes. Could I ask someone to move approval? David? Second by Brenda, thank you very much. All in favor? Great. All right, comments from our CEO, Verna. Great, thanks very much, Linda, and good morning to everyone. It's great to be here at the first board meeting of 2017. We're focused this year on building the momentum that we've built and generated over the past 12 months. During that time, we landed on a new vision, refreshed values, we completed the rollout of our four foundational strategies. We extended a helping hand to nearly 90,000 Albertans forced to flee the devastating Fort Mac wildfire. And among other achievements, we continue to strengthen our commitment to patient and family-centered care. As a health system, we want to ensure that patients, clients, and families are at the center of everything that we do. This requires us to look at everything we do within the health system through the eyes of the people we serve. As healthcare workers, we need to know what are our patients and families feeling, what do they need from their healthcare team, how would they like to be involved in their care, and what are their most pressing concerns. And interestingly enough, these concerns are often have not to do with uh, their medical illness, but often has to do with their loved ones, colleagues, and not necessarily focused on themselves. And these are the questions that we should be asking. I remain a frontline care provider and I've been on the ward where all the bells are ringing and the healthcare team is running nonstop. At that point, there's simply no time to sit and reflect. There's only time to deal with the next crisis coming through the door, but at some point we do need that period of reflection. And I believe that why I do what I do can be reached through the power of storytelling. For me, storytelling brings to the forefront the humanity within healthcare. It reminds staff, physician, and volunteers of why we're here. It helps us look after our patients and ourselves better. And it has the power to bring joy back into the workplace. This year, HS will continue to put emphasis on telling the stories of patients, clients, families, and our own staff to remind everyone inside and outside of the organization what's truly important uh, behind the work that happens in HS. These stories reveal the people behind the patient, the heart within the healthcare system. These stories are told through the written word and through multimedia, 
including podcasts and videos. And although many AHS departments are now using storytelling, our community engagement and communications team and our engagement and patient experience teams are taking the lead and producing some exceptional work for all Albertans to enjoy. At last month's board meeting, I showed the latest installment in our Because You Cared video series. This series gives patients and families an opportunity to share their stories, thank their healthcare teams, and highlight what helped make their experience an exemplary one. Today, I'd like to share with you a montage of several videos produced this year by the Engagement and Patient Experience team that highlights the personal stories of several of our patients and families. So please take a look. She was late again. My cell phone rang. A voice said, we need you at the Foothills Emergency now. My knees buckled. The lobby in which I stood tilted on its side. How do I get to the hospital? How do I get to my car? Where is my car? At the moment of her almost death, I kept asking when I could go get our car, as if somehow getting the car would make it all right. The world we have now is not the world we had before. But we do have a world. In this new world, we ask each other, has it been a good day? And going to bed each night, we ask each other, did I tell you I love you today? He wanted to still go to the rodeo, football games, car races, and hockey games. But my mind screamed, don't you realize you're dying and leaving me behind? I wanted to scream at him, how can you be so positive? Does anyone care that I feel like I'm losing my identity? Does anyone see that I am more than a caregiver? Do they see that this is my life too? My choice was to be extremely positive in attitude and focus on my game by working closely with my medical team and my personal support team, which consisted of my wife, family, close friends, and my dog. In the same way that I would picture a shot before I took it, I used mindfulness meditation, visualization, and yoga classes that were offered at Wellspring to keep me focused. I joined a men's GI cancer group to talk about the issues, just like I would chat with my buddies on the golf course. To me, being in the best physical and mental condition going into treatment and surgery was paramount to the outcome of my game. That simple encounter of that doctor spending five minutes to get to know me changed my view of the healthcare system and ultimately on myself. He helped me realize that I had a choice. Was I going to let what happened define me, or was I going to do something about it? Was I a victim, or was I a survivor? Now I know I'm not Maya, the disease-stricken individual. I take every challenge as an opportunity to learn and grow. I'm a traveler. I'm an advisor. I am not my disease. I am Maya. If you like this video, I really encourage you to view the entire series of videos on the AHS channel on YouTube. It's well worth your time. AHS has a lot of strength in our ability to relate data, to relate statistics, and relate financial information. But we haven't been particularly strong in reminding ourselves and others of the humanism we all value in healthcare. Storytelling is truly the best way to achieving this goal. Inspirational stories from the people we serve, as well as from staff, physicians, and volunteers, have the power to give patients and families hope, to energize and rejuvenate our hardworking frontline health providers. And for those of us on the front lines, storytelling reminds us that Albertans come to us not as patients or as a disease, but as individuals who have their own unique backstory to tell. And through storytelling, health providers may be less inclined to ask a patient what's the matter with you instead, and they may be more inclined to ask what matters to you. It's just a change of two simple words, but it makes a world of difference to patients and families. And that shift in thinking and our continued shift toward patient and family standard care will be enabled by remembering that every day all of us working in healthcare are being invited to play a big role in someone's life story. 
That's our privilege, that's our responsibility, and we should always strive to be the best in all that we do. So thank you for your time today. Thank you, Verna. All right, Quality and Safety Committee. Uh, Brenda? Thank you, Linda. The Quality and Safety Committee met on January 18, 2017. The focus of the discussion was strategic exploring the link between quality and fiscal priorities. At the meeting, the committee reviewed the November 2016 CAIHAI update of 15 indicators relating to long-term care performance and emergency department visits, as well as hospital mortality rates. The committee discussed the excellent results for Alberta with respect to inappropriate use of antipsychotics in long-term care. The committee also received a very interesting presentation on the analytical methods and measurements used to compare capacity relative to need in Alberta and received an interesting presentation on the strategic clinical networks and clinical appropriateness. We heard that the strategic clinical networks had three major priorities, that of outcome improvement through clinical pathways, clinical appropriateness, clinical standards and targets, as well as health and social system integration. The committee also confirmed indicators for a provincial quality dashboard that will assist the committee in overseeing AHS's responsibility of providing a patient-focused quality healthcare system that is accessible and sustainable for all Albertans. The committee also reviewed a request for changes to the AHS Quality Assurance Committee, referred to as QAC, structure and terms of reference with respect to name and activity changes, to identify certain subcommittees as long-standing subcommittees, and to standing down one committee. The committee recommended the board approve the proposed changes. Accordingly, I move that the Alberta Health Services Board approve, number one, amendments to the terms of reference for the following QACs to reflect the noted name changes, as well as certain activity changes. Continuing care, Edmonton Zone QAC, to continuing care, Edmonton Zone in brackets QAC. Corrections Health Services QAC to Correctional Health Care QAC. Population and Public Health QAC to Population, Public and Indigenous Health QAC. And number two, the establishment of the Lois Hole Hospital for Women's Perinatal QA Subcommittee of the RAH QAC and the South Zone Perinatal Review QA Subcommittee of the South Zone Complex Review QAC as long-standing subcommittees and also, point three, the standing down of the Patient Safety Provincial QAC. I so move. Thanks, Madam Chair. Um, Finance Committee met on January 19th, 2017, and all board members were in attendance at that meeting. The primary focus of the meeting was budget planning, but the committee also considered performance measure updates and a restricted grant agreement that required board approval. Specifically, the committee reviewed a draft restricted grant agreement between Alberta Health and Alberta Health Services with respect to the training and compensation of postgraduate medical education students who work in AHS facilities and provide clinical services as part of their educational training for the activity period from July the 1st, 2016 to June 30th, 2018. Grant agreement exceeds the approval and signing authority level of the President and CEO and therefore needs to be approved by the Board. The committee recommended that the Board approve the grant agreement as reviewed by the committee and delegate signing authority of the agreement on behalf of AHS to the President and CEO. Accordingly, I move that the Alberta Health Services Board firstly approve the Alberta Health Grant Agreement for the training and compensation of postgraduate medical education students who work in AHS facilities and provide clinical services as part of their educational training for the activity period July 1, 2016 to June 30th, 2018. And secondly, delegate authority to execute the grant agreement on behalf of Alberta Health Services to the President and Chief Executive Officer. I so move. Seconder. Marlis. All in favor? That's carried. Could I have a motion to adjourn? Marlis. Second by Hugh. All right. We're adjourned. Thank you very much, everyone. <laughs>